Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Hope everybody's doing good today. I have been working on the miniature house. I'll show you some video clips of the progress that's being made or has been made. But I did promise a miniature book, so let's make one today. This is a miniature of like a little encyclopedia type book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out this block of pages and the cover. Let me back you up a little bit. It's like, it's like you're in my lap. Okay, and next I'm going to line up this up at the top. And you should be able to score every three quarters of an inch on um, if you have a scoreboard. If you don't have a scoreboard, you still need to score every three quarters of an inch, but you'll have to do it by hand. And I have found that if you use a piece of like um, craft foam, you know what craft foam is, right? You know, like these sheets of craft foam. They are very, very inexpensive, like super duper inexpensive. And if you use um, craft foam um, underneath the paper and then just use a straight edge, and this is just a knitting needle. You don't even have to buy a stylus or a scoring tool of any kind. If you have a knitting needle sitting around, that'll work. Also at the Dollar Tree, if you have a dollar store or a pound store near you, look in the craft section and see if they have any um, little ball stylus or sculpting tools that you might be able to get really cheaply as well. While I have the scoreboard out, I am going to just line this up and I'm going to score along the top and the sides where these little flaps are indicated. And then also I'll score where this spine is also kind of, it's got little shadows. And then I'm going to cut out these white corners. Just makes it easier to fold when you put it all together. And you can cut the white corners out first before you score. Might make it easier to line up the little flaps with the score line. I will set this aside. I think I'm done with that. Now I need to take this block of pages and cut it into three strips. I'm just going to line up the page breaks on the cutting edge. There's one. Two. Okay, now I can put it away. Sorry, it's been so long since I've uh, posted anything. I live in Colorado, northern Colorado, and we started getting smoke from the wildfires in Canada, and my um, throat got so irritated that I lost my voice, <laughs> and I wasn't even outside. Like, I tried not to go outside, because I'm one of those, you know, high risk of everything people, so... I'm not really supposed to go outside when it's, you know, where they have those hazardous ozone days or whatever they call them. I don't know. I'm just not really supposed to go out in that. So I didn't. Didn't matter. Of course, had I been outside, it probably would have been worse, right? But it's hard to make a video when you don't have a voice. And I'm still a little tiny bit raspy. You might be able to tell I'm a little bit, but nothing, nothing. I mean, it was gone. <laughs> And then when it started coming back, then it was like I sounded like I had been a coal miner down in the depths of a coal mine for 50 years and I had black lung. Okay, when you fold these pages, the first one folds in like that. 
and then the next one folds back and then you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we will be putting some glue, I say we, me and the mouse in my pocket, we'll be putting some glue to glue all these pages together. But I like to go ahead and reinforce those folds. Now for the, the next two, this first page is going to be glued to the back of the last page on the previous strip. And the same with this one. It'll be glued to the back. So this one actually gets folded back and then forward. I know, complicated. Complicated! But that's why you have me to tell you how I convolutedly made this pattern so that it can't all be in one direction. I don't know. That wouldn't be right. So there's the second one. And then the same with this one. It also gets folded oops, back and then forward and then back. And if you make those score lines ahead of time, it really, really helps with keeping everything situated and straight. As far as glue goes, you can use tape, you can use a glue stick, I mean, whatever floats your boater. I think I'm going to use a glue stick. So I'm going to put some glue on the back of this last page of the first strip. And I'm going to glue all the way to the fold. And then I'm going to stick this last page to the first page of the next strip and just line up those fold lines. So this one lines up with that fold line and this edge lines up with this fold line. And then you do the same thing with this one. Put some glue on this sucker. It doesn't matter whether you put glue on the front of this one or the stay or the back of this one either way. I'll line that up as evenly as possible so that when everything is all put together you can check it before the glue decides to stick forever and ever. And it really is hard to get it like perfect perfect so don't stress out too much. More glue goes on the strip but I leave the first and the last one without glue. So however it is you decide to do that. Of course I'm using the biggest glue stick known to man. And now you just fold it back up in an accordion like we had it. And then the backs of these pages, the blank backs, will stick to each other and that will create your book pages. Line them all up. Give them a squeeze. Will it be perfect? Probably not. But it's going to be alright. So there are our pages. And I'm going to grab this little clip clip these together like so and then this little guy where's my plastic I'm going to put glue I guess you could scoot back into my lap now here we go then I'm going to put this glue across the top and bottom tabs not the sides but just the top and the bottom And I go ahead and I fold those over. There's the bottom one. And now, get a clean part of my acetate, I'm going to put glue 
across the back between the two side tabs. You can even put it on the side tabs, it doesn't really matter. Gonna have to put it there anyway. So go ahead and go ahead and slather the whole thing up with glue. And then make sure the right end is up, which I did not do that. And then the right end up on this. And you should be able to center this right in the middle. The spine should go where you know the spine is. And you can lay down the front and the back. Kind of skew it so that everybody's in there nice and straight. And then you can fold over these little side tabs. Like that. Go ahead and fold it up and get your book all situated. And then what I like to do, this is how I made this book, is you can put a little bit of glue on the back of this first page and then it gets folded back to enclose the inside front cover and then you can do the same thing in the back and you can put glue on the inside and then the last page folds down and encloses those little tabs if somebody in your dollhouse decides to open up your book, I mean, heaven forbid they see little tabs. Now the spine itself, even though we smeared glue in there, it probably won't stick because, see how it leaves like a little gap there? If you use like really, really sturdy stick glue, like um, even like PVA, it might stick there and if it does it's no big deal the spine will just fold inward with the book pages when you open the book so it's it's really no big deal either way if you don't want it to stick then just avoid this spine area just put glue on um, either side but just not on that little center spot but when I use a glue stick it's like the glue isn't strong enough to uh, hold that back. So it just kind of makes that little hollow. But then here is our winky little book, uh, Wonders of the Universe, our little science textbook. And it's really tiny and you won't be able to read it, but it does have some neat little illustrations in here, all sciency and stuff and then the back. So this will have to go in the miniature house. I figured that was a perfect size. <laughs> it's dinky. Have to put it in a little chair. I made a little chair. Isn't that cute? You can seal these if you want, like seal the cover with like Mod Podge, but you can use a, like an artist's varnish, uh, matte medium or, you know, something if you want. You could even spray it. They make sealer, like a clear sealer, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Uh, you can do it before or after you put it together. However your process goes, I will leave that up to you. I'm not going to micromanage your miniature bookmaking. But what I like about gluing the little extra pages down is it makes the cover like a little hard cover almost. It's still a little flexible, but it's quite a bit thicker than the pages. It makes it feel more like what a hard cover book of this scale should feel like without having to get out chipboard and or thicker cardstock and print on something different you know it's just, that just seemed like a lot of trouble just reeks of effort i came up with this instead to mimic that thicker cover i will be coming up with a few more of these because you know you can't just have one book in the miniature house you'll have to have more than one book might even have to have stacks and stacks of books this didn't take too long to put together, so, you know, maybe I'll be able to make a, a good dozen different kinds or something. I don't know. We'll see. That might be a pipe dream. All right, I will play for you the progress of the miniature house and what I've done so far, what I was doing when I didn't have a voice, but I hope you enjoy that. I'm going to go get back to work because I, th I think I'm, I'm, like, nearing the finish line. I think I am depending on what goes inside of it, of course. 
for my bibliophiles on Patreon. This little kit is loaded for you up on your page. And if anybody else would like to make one, I put it up for just a dollar on my Etsy store. If you feel the need of making a miniature little book, it is loaded for you. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope everybody is having an excellent week and I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys. Thank you.